Hello guys and welcome back to another class of our course about the complete introduction to quantum computing. So in today's class we are still going to talk about the concept of qubit and basically we are going to understand a little bit what exactly this is and uh, all the mathematical aspects of this amazing uh, concept that is inside of quantum computing. So let's start. Alright, um, so basically what we are going to talk about today would be working with multiple qubits um, as well as working with x numbers of qubits. Um, so let's start with the qubit, let's start with the two qubits, so basically if we have two qubits. So in the example both can be in the zero state, both can be in the one state, and both can be in different other states. And this can happen well in four more ways. Um, since there are four different states uh, for a system with two qubits, um, we can model a two qubit system as a normalized vector in a vector space of four dimensions. So, in other words, in a four dimensional vector space. So, also the standard basis of our vector space will have the following qubits combination. So basically you can see them right here. Um, so since we have two qubits, we'll have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Um, and here we need to understand that a qubit can be a in the state 0 or at the state 1 at the same time. So basically with two qubits, it's possible to have four states, like it's written right here. Um, so for now, it's pretty simple since we are only having a two qubit system. But let's say that we have uh, a 50 qubit system. So it's a bit complicated to write down plenty of ones and zeros. Uh, so for each, uh, well, plenty of ones and zeros for each basis vector. So a simple way to write down those vectors will be with the use of decimals. So basically, in other words, uh, let's say giving a value to each vector. So for example, let's say we have our zero, zero right here. Uh, this will have the value zero. We'll have zero, one will have the value one. Zero, one, zero will have the value two. And one, one will have the value three. So with this, it's possible to convert the binary representation of those qubits into decimal. So basically there is a formula to do it. Well, there is not, not really a formula, we'll simply convert it. And it's then, well, it's way more simpler to work with decimals than to work with, uh, well, ones and zeros. So basically binary numbers. Um, so now working with X number of qubits. So basically um, when we have two qubits, uh, the thing is we can have four states. But if we have, for example, a random amount of qubits, so let's say, for example, we have 50 qubits how can we know exactly the number of states that we can have? So basically, how much states is it possible to have? And uh, how we can define how complex it is to, well, to have, to, to quantum compute all those states. So it's pretty simple. We'll use the formula below. So basically, it's 2 at uh, power n. And basically, n will simply be the number of qubits. So let's say, for example, we have 2 qubits. So it's going to be 2 at power 2. And we can have four states simultaneously. So basically at the same time, we can have four states. But now let's say we have 50 qubits. Um, so in this case, the number of possible states will be two at power 50, which is a pretty tremendous amount of uh, states that can possibly happen. So basically this is where you can see the power of uh, quantum computing. Since, for example, if we only have, well, since if we're, for example, working with only bits, uh, what's going to happen is that you can only have one state at the time. So basically to have this, well, it's possible to have this amount of states um, in uh, with normal bits, but it's going to be one uh, calculation or one state at a time. But in quantum computing, you will have all those states at the same time. So basically it will make all the calculations at the same time, uh, which is pretty cool. And that can uh, save us plenty of hours of calculation. So something that can take years for a normal computer can take minutes or even seconds to a quantum computer to make. So basically some really advanced operations. Um, then for, uh, well, another 
another state that is really important to understand, um, especially in quantum computing. So uh, this type of state is called uh, uniform superposition. So they said, uh, well, um, so what is it exactly uniform superposition? Uh, so it's pretty simple. It's a state where the probability of collapsing the state vector with any other vector between the va the basis vector will be the same. So that is all the basis vectors have pretty much uh, the same amplitude. This is why we can call this state a uniform superposition. Um, so basically to understand it better, uh, we can take a basic example of uh, one qubit. So let's say that we have, for example, uh, a system with only one qubit. So the uniform superposition will be the probability of one half of collapsing to the state zero or the state one. So in this case, with a system with only one qubit, um, well, there is a calculation that can be made uh, that will say that we have uh, 0 0.5 percent, well, 0. Point, well, 50 percent of chances of hitting the zero or 50% of chances of hitting the one. So basically this would be um, for uniform superposition and it will be pretty much the same thing for, uh, well, we can calculate it for a higher number of qubits. So basically this is just an example of one qubit, but you can do the same thing with uh, pretty much, well, we can do the same thing with a lot of uh, other qubits. So basically we can, we can do it with two, three, four, or an infinity number of uh, qubits. And uh, this is exactly where it's important to transform your numbers. Well, your uh, your well your 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 qubits, your binary numbers into decimals. So basically, this is where the utility of uh, the transformations of binary into decimals. So basically, zeros and ones into decimals uh, will be re really important to make to the vectors that you are going to work with. Um, so I hope right now you guys understand a little bit more what exactly is a qubit. Once again, my goal here is not to make you all the mathematical demonstrations. Um, because once again, I don't want you to be a professional in this field. It's just uh, an introduction for you guys. So I hope you will understand the basic mathematics behind the qubit until now. Um, and as you can see, it's something that is uh, really, really useful, especially in quantum computing. Well, it's the it's the place where it's uh, used the most. Um, well, quantum computing can't really be possible without the qubit. And uh, basically, um, as you can see, this is well, this is the basic mathematics behind all this. And uh, there are some well, really more advanced mathematics to all this, but this is really the basic to just give you an introduction to all this. So that's it for this class, guys, and see you all in our next class.